Hi everybody, this is Coach JVB with your next Becoming Unapologetically Powerful video, three tips for strengthening your sumo deadlift. So here's why we love the sumo deadlift. This is a variation that heavily recruits the glutes and the adductors, so it's really great for strengthening the hips. It also takes some sheer force off the low back. And because you have a wider foot positioning, you don't have to lift the bar as far, which makes it a great option for you to use on the platform because it is a deadlift variation that's allowed in competition. All right, so I've got three tips for you. Let's hit the bar. So the first tip we're going to talk about today for the sumo deadlift is your foot position. But before we get to that, I have something really quick for you, this cute, this uh, little trick. And I was actually talking to my friend and fellow strength coach, Jordan Syatt, he is, he owns a four times body weight deadlift, so he knows a little bit about lifting weights. And he has this trick for when the bar rolls away from you, when you're setting up your deadlift, and you chase after it, and you pull it in, and you chase after and pull it in. Jordan has this really simple solution, which is to step to the other side of the bar and let the bar roll to you. Easy fix, so that you're not running around the gym chasing it. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, Jordan and I were also talking about foot positioning on the deadlift. And how, even though there are some general recommendations that you do want to follow, there really isn't one, what, one right position for everybody. So some people assume, because it's a sumo, that they need to go as wide as possible. And there are some lifters that are really successful with this, where their toes are pretty much touching the plates. But what I want you to do is play around and find what position feels most comfortable for you. So that might be anywhere between going super wide and stepping into where you're just a little bit wider than shoulder width. The one thing you do want to remember is that when you come down and get the bar, your feet need to be wide enough apart where your arms aren't hitting the, aren't hitting the fronts of your legs. So for me, that will look more like this. And I'm actually gonna have to chase the bar. If, there, if we weren't filming, I would step to the other side. So that would be a good start sumo position for me. Our second tip is all about raising the spine. So here's a common mistake I see with the sumo deadlift, is the lifter will assume a wide foot position, and then the butt pops out, the guts sort of spill up over the bar, and the rib cage, the rib cage flares. So we're gonna take this tip from our previous video on raising the spine for the back squat, so if you haven't seen that yet, go listen to it. But I talk about powerlifter Chris Duffin and his cue for sort of uh, compressing the thoracic spine by imagining a cylinder pressing down, okay? So it compresses down, you press down your sternum, the rib cage wraps, and the lower abs lift. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bring you from here to here, which is a much safer position to initiate the deadlift. Our third tip is to sit back, not down. So because of the wider foot positioning for the sumo deadlift, your chest is a bit more upright than it would be for the conventional deadlift. Even so, it is still a deadlift, which means it's a hinge and not a squat. So you want to think about sitting back versus sitting down, okay? You will know if you're sitting down versus back if your knees go past your ankles on your setup. So what you wanna do is, when you come up to the bar and you get your feet right, you're going to push your hips back, your knees stay behind the bar, 